Hey everyone, welcome back to Rob Wells Music Talk episode 10. Today we are going to be talking about all things being an artist, what it's like to be an artist, what I look for in an artist, and many more things. So let's just dive straight into it. Uh, so being a music producer and a songwriter, I get asked all the time by different people, what is it that I look for in an artist? And I'm about to give you everything that I look for in an artist. And this episode may be um, very informative to you or it might be very depressing to you. I, I don't know. Uh, it, it, could be, it could be very different for everyone who watches this. But here we go. What do I look for in an artist? So without saying, the very first thing that I have to look for in an artist, I have to be attracted to the artist's music. I really have to love the music that I'm hearing. I have to be attracted to the, to the artist's abilities their drive, and last but not least, their image. So just the whole package, I have to be able to look at them and just be like, wow, that's incredible. So I have to be blown away by what I'm hearing. I kind of want to think that I'm not worthy to work with the artist. Like, why am I even here? Why would they even want me to be in a room working with them? They're so great on their own. They're just amazing. How can I put what I do on what the artist does? You know, is there a way that I can find a way to take what they're already doing that I think is already amazing and elevate it that much more? That's the level of what I'm looking for in an artist every single time. Um, now, that being said, being blown away by listening to the artist's music, uh, being blown away doesn't mean that the artist's production has to be incredible. I'm looking more for like their songwriting or their performance or their emotion or you know just any little thing like that and it could honestly be just a simple recording a video recording or just a, a voice note recording from your phone anything like that i can still be blown away by by something as simple as that so after that after i've already been blown away by all of that i have to get to know the artist i have to know who they are, what their personality is like. It's very, very important to know what their personality is like. Uh, I want to meet the artist and hang out. I want to know that I can spend eight hours a day with this person and not want to get rid of them by the end of the first session. The hang is always the most important aspect, always, for sure. It's kind of like being in a boat with somebody, you know, sitting in that boat for eight hours and just talking and communicating and having fun and all that it's such a drag when you're with somebody that's really intense and you don't get along with them and the music is not all that great you just want to at the end of the day just throw them out of that boat not that i would do that but it's just a figure of speech i guess um so after i can figure out you know uh that we can hang that we're having some good laughs that there's a personality uh connection between the two of us the next thing that i'm going to ask is a whole series of questions uh, i really really want to know does the artist live and breathe music? Do they wake up every day thinking about music? And do they go throughout their entire day thinking about music or working on their music? Do they go to bed at night thinking about music and what their plans are for the next day or for the next week or for the next month or for the next year? Are they just constantly just, you know, is it kind of like a sickness, like, like what I have? I'm constantly thinking about music and I'm thinking about productions and I'm thinking about projects and thinking about the whole machine and just, you know, I, I love it so much that I just, I can't wait to keep, keep doing it and keep getting at it. So I want to know that the same fire that I have inside me, do they have inside them? It's really, really important that we're both just like, yes, let's run, let's go, let's just make this happen. Um, I then want to know kind of, you know, what's your musical story? What, what's the artist's musical story? What's their life story with music? Uh, when did they start singing and or playing an instrument? Um, I just want to know all these little details. And sometimes it's too much information for an artist to give out certain questions, but or certain answers to my questions, but it's important for me to ask them. Uh, do they have any of the other members of the family that have any musical abilities or interest? Quite often, you'll find out from an artist that you want to work with that their grandfather or their grandmother was so-and-so and they, they did this in music and you can start to see a repeating pattern that that drive and that ambition is just in that family, um, which is a good thing to have. Um, have. Have you been performing your whole life? Has the artist been performing their whole life? For example, singing in choirs at church or at school, uh, doing 
music theater or putting on music shows, uh, community theater, community shows, gigs, events, uh, functions that happen within your community, uh, your city, your town, all of that. Uh, basically, how much have you done on your own and you're already doing on your own without my involvement? And if I see that there's a lot of activity already going on and that you're just, you're doing a million things and it's really, really working, then that also gets me excited and it makes me think, well, this is amazing. If I'm gonna work really, really hard with this artist and create a record or create a song uh, or a collection of songs, uh, I know that once it's done, that the artist is gonna take this and make it explode once it leaves my hands because they're gonna work just as hard as they were working before, if not harder. Uh, I need to know that you want this more than absolutely everything, anything at all, and that you're already working hard to make your dreams happen. It shouldn't be that I have to be the one to coax you along and try to keep you motivated. That's a real bad sign if, you know, you try to get the artist to say, you know, hey, do you want to come back and finish that song that we started last month? Um, it, it's so much better when the artist is just on top of me and just being like, when can I get in? When can we finish this? And, you know, not in a weird way, but just a really nice, fun, loving way, you know, that they're really driven and really excited to get back in the studio and work with me. Okay, so now that I have that, uh, I do a bit of an artist checklist, a little bit deeper of an artist checklist, and I still want to know these things before I agree to, to come on uh, to the project. So, first of all, here in the checklist, do you have a good team built around you? Uh, do you have a manager already? Do you have a label already assigned to you? Have you signed with the label? Do you have a lawyer? Do you have an accountant? Do you have a booking agent? Do you have a publisher? Um, parents that are supportive to you, uh, that's for, for someone who's under the age of 18. Uh, it's very important that the parents are, are great. It's also very important that the parents are not momagers and dadagers and that they're like so involved to the point that it, it just becomes really horrible working situation. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I want to know about the, the whole team that's around you. Not only do you have these people, manager, label, lawyer, accountant, booking agent, publisher, parents, are they all good people? Do they all communicate with each other really, really well? Uh, do they all want the same goals down the road? Are they all looking for the same thing to happen with you? That's all very important. Uh, again, what have you done lately? What are you doing on your own to propel your own career? Very important that I know that you're driven, that you're really determined to make this happen. Have you created any music on your own? Have you made any of your own music videos? Are you playing any shows? Are you booking any meetings? Sorry, not you, specifically you. I'm talking about just as if I'm talking to the artist. Uh, how is your social media game? Here we are in this day and age that we have to worry about social media. It really, really is important being an artist that your social media game is great and that you're constantly posting new things that are relevant to what you're doing um, that are not too silly, but just make you like a really cool brand and people get excited when they go to your site and check out your, your page, whether it be Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is. Um, so not only that, but with your social media, updating your social media, uh, do you keep in touch with your social media followers? Very important to constantly be, you know, replying to people. Just doesn't have to be huge, lengthy, long paragraphs or anything, but just something that keeps you engaged and keeps keeps your name being spread out there. Is that you're someone who is really, really cool and creates really, really cool music, and it just helps spread and gets you more followers and uh, all of that. Uh, with that in mind, what are your social media numbers like? Not really important to me, but I know that it's important to labels that are out there. They're gonna definitely look at your social media numbers. They're gonna look at your Spotify plays, your Apple Music plays, uh, whether you're selling albums or merch or all that from the side of the stage. Uh, are you bringing people out to the shows because your social media game is really, really good and you're attracting a lot of people and you're saying, hey, I've got a show happening here and all of a sudden you've just reached out to 6,000 people that are on your social media and then you've got a sold out show. These are all really, really good things to, to have. Um, have you taken any courses on music business development or how to run a music business properly? Um, most artists have not done this, but it's really, really advised to do something like this because, well, I'm gonna get into this just in a couple of minutes. Um, this is the music business and it's good for you to really understand the music business on, a, on, on the whole spectrum, just to understand what each part really, really does and how it all works together. And this leads to that and that leads to that. And that's how you get from point A to point B from becoming an artist to releasing material and then all the rest of the stuff that goes on. Um, one last question in the artist checklist that I wanna know. How do you handle rejection? 
because this is the business of rejection. You're gonna be rejected more times than you could possibly imagine. Uh, out of 100 times that you try for something, 99% of those people are going to say no, and the 1% is gonna say yes. So how do you handle rejection? Does it throw you down on your feet, or, you know, knock you over and you can't get back up? Or do you get back up right after you have rejection and you keep going forward? That's what I'm looking for. I wanna know some, that, that I'm working with someone that can handle rejection and it just doesn't knock them, knock them down permanently. Uh, now, here is the last thing that I'm gonna talk about with being an artist before we jump in uh, to work. And if you really, really want to be an artist and you're thinking, you know, I love singing for people, I love singing for the world, I love getting my message out there, I love going up on stage and performing, this is a bit of a reality check for you because being an artist is not just about being an artist. There's so much more involved into being an artist than just getting up on stage and singing for the people. The actual time spent singing and performing is probably about three to 5% of your whole time being an artist. The rest of the time is all about business. It is all about business. You are essentially creating a company, a company that you have to work very hard at to succeed. And there's so many different facets to a company. Just imagine trying to run a big, big company like Amazon, for example, or anything else. It's just so many different departments and divisions and things that have to happen and this department has to talk to this one and this all has to be coordinated and meetings have to happen and all that. So here's just a small little list of all the things that you will potentially be doing if you become an artist. There's interviews for radio, print, and television. There's marketing, social media, publicity, booking gigs, chasing down money, applying for grants, photography sessions, making music videos, um, taking meetings with managers, labels, agents, promoters, hiring musicians, practicing singing or your instrument, uh, lessons for your singing or your instrument, um, dancing lessons even, <coughs> and movement lessons, uh, makeup, hair, wardrobe, travel, booking travel, hotels, transportation, listening to submitted songs, co-writing songs with others, hiring producers, recording albums, recording singles, keeping your calendar up to date, doing your taxes, keeping up with your accounting, hiring a great lawyer and dealing with contracts, staying current, etc., etc., etc. That is just a very, very small list compared to what it actually is. That's kind of just the, the icing on the cake or the tip of the iceberg, if, if you will. Um, it, there's so much more to being an artist than just getting up and singing, as you can see. It's not just sitting around walking up on stage and singing your heart out. It's a business. It's the music business and I can't stress that enough and if that all sounds absolutely scary to you then maybe maybe being an artist is not something that you're cut out for that being said you can always grow into it it doesn't just happen all at once that you say I'm gonna be an artist and then boom you have all this stuff to do you slowly break into it as this world uh, sorry, sorry you slowly break into this world as things get more and more serious so it sort of ramps up a little bit exponentially as things go on now if this list this small short list sounds amazing to you and you have an amazing god-given talent then you are truly cut out for this business and somebody like me wants to talk to you uh to make things happen to take things to the next level to take things up a, up a notch and to uh, another step um i want to know that you are just a great driven talented person that has a really unique vibe and I want to attach myself to that. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, I hope I didn't bore you to tears. That's it for this episode. Um, I hope I didn't dissuade anybody from being an artist either because you know, it is, it is a lot of hard work. Anything that's worth it in this world is a lot of hard work. So I would just suggest that, you know, if, if you're really excited by this and all the things that I've talked about in this episode don't scare you off, then keep moving forward. So thank you all for watching. And if you like this series that I'm doing, please, please, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that little button that says subscribe. Um, for more episodes, um, they're, they're coming down the, the, the line. Um, I have other things that are happening, hopefully some interviews with some other people in the music industry uh, to find out what they do, how they got to where they are and where they see the music business going. So once again, thanks again for watching Rob Wells Music Talk and Please subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye.